Okay, hi and welcome to the fourth part of this day three, a long day today. And we're gonna unlock the last form that we need for solving most of the problems that we're gonna be taking up. So we have been talking about these four forms, uh, the form one where you move forward for subsets and stuff, form two where you find out chains and sequences, subsequences, Elias problem that we discussed, right? Which ends at a particular end ending form. This was the like object iteration or you can think it as an abstract form as well or things like that. This is more like uh, going through the sequence and uh, like uh, solving it for a particular sub, uh, sub part of the main two arrays, multi-array DPU uh, we talked about, form three. Form four is LRDP or uh, interval DP over where we kind of go through which mid we split and then solve the problem, right? What is form five? Form five is nothing but game DP, right? And uh, we're gonna deal with some certain kind of combinatorially impartial games. Same combinatorially impartial games means uh, like when you say impartial, it's essentially um, you have same set of rules for both the players. That's what impartial games are. And combinatorially impartial games generally are decided pre-made. I mean, based on what is the current scenario and whose move it is, it is generally decided who wins or loses. That that kind of games are what we are gonna di discuss in this particular video. And the game DP kind of is something like this, that you have DP of config, config is the board size, board, sorry, the board configuration that is currently there or whichever game is being played, the board configuration, the current scenario, the current file sizes, the stack sizes and things like this, whatever that is, that is going to go into over here in the config, whatever is the current scenario. And if this is the current scenario, will the playing player playing right now wins or loses is what this DP returns, right? If this is the configuration right now, whether the player playing right now is going to win or lose. Uh, now the main idea about this kind of DP is that for this particular state, let's say this is a configuration, right? And if you make a move a, you're going to reach this configuration. Like it can be like chess board where you make this move. When you, if you reach, if you make a move B, you reach this configuration. If you reach this, um, if you make this move, you're going to reach this configuration, right? So, or think about a game like tic-tac-toe. It's like playing across on the side, it's playing across in the middle or somewhere. Like these are the different moves. Now, to decide if this particular state is winning or losing, we can decide after making the move, we need to know whether these are winning or losing. So, let's say th this is a state which, with the move, you can reach to a losing state, which means at this particular situation of the config, whoever is going to play is bound to lose. In that case, Whoever is playing over here in this configuration is going to make the move A so that his opponent is at a losing state. So his opponent will lose in other ways that player is going to win. So the current player can take a move A and make the opponent lose so the current player can win. So this is a winning state. This is how we design the transitions. So if a current state can lead to a losing state, like if you can lead your opponent to the losing state, then you are winning. But if you, irrespective of what move you make, you are, your opponent is, so you have the choice of move, but irrespective of what move you make, your opponent is going to win. In that case, you are going to lose. Okay. So that's the definition of losing state. So this is how we define the winning states and losing state, and this is how you compute it. So from whichever state based on the rules of the games, whichever states you can go to, you need to know, you, you can find out whether they are winning, losing recursively, and then you can merge them with this logic that if any states that you can reach is losing, if you can force your opponent to go to a losing state, then you're going to win. But if irrespective of what you play, your opponent is going to win. So you're going to lose. That's the main idea of game DPs. So let's take a, let's take a problem and we're going to take a variation of a very, very classical problem called subtraction game. Uh, so the subtraction game is something like this, that you have a, like a, like, a, let's say a pool of chips in front of you. There are X chips, X, uh, chips present in the pool or in a stack. Anyways, you can keep it right in a particular move, whoever player is playing can take Y number of chips out of the pool. So there is like X chips. If you take out Y, then in the next move, there would be X minus Y chips left and it will be the other players move. So there are two players and the other players move is going to be X chips. Uh, X minus Y chips would be there for the other player. Okay. And you can take out any Y, which is of the form two to the power F. So you can take out any power of two out of the chips. Okay. And uh, with that, if you want to transfer the move to the opponent's move. The first player who is not able to make a move loses. So if you cannot make a move, you're going to lose. Okay. So that's the setup. Now we're going to solve this with form five, but let's quickly briefly discuss about, let's say a particular case. So let's say if you have two chips, so obviously somebody can take a 
so let's say the player one is going to come in and he's he's going to take two chips directly because you can take two chips because two two to the power two two to the power one is a two so you can take y number of chips which is equal to two and then for player two the chips will be empty right there will be no chips in it okay so in that case the player two will not be able to make a move so uh, player two will lose but let's say there are three chips right now okay there are three chips okay in that case if player one takes one chip then player two will take two chips and then player one will have no chips to take if player one takes two chips player one player two is going to take one chip and then player one player two uh, player two is going to take one chip and then player one will have no moves so either one or two you cannot take four chips because there are no four move there are no four chips available as well so irrespective of what move you make your opponent is going to make a move so from over here your opponent can make a move and you will lose so this is a losing state if you have three uh, chips you going to whoever is playing right now is going to lose with this rules right so that's the setup of the game so we need to find out if you have like in this case the configuration is just x chips so if you have x chips do you want is are you going to win or are you going to lose if you play the first player right now so now from this let's start, this is the state okay if you have x chips in the board uh, and we need to decide whether this is winning or losing for the player who is playing right now what is the transitions okay transitions so from dp of x uh, i can go to any particular like i can go to dp of x minus 1 because if i can take one chip dp of x minus 2 i can take two chips dp of x minus 4 i can take four chips so on up till dp of x minus 2 to the power m any 2 to the power m right as long as 2 to the power m is less than obviously is less than or equal to x till that point we can take we cannot go more than that so we can take these we can go to any of these states and if any of this any of this configuration is losing any losing then this is winning if all of them are winning then this is losing all win states if you reach to all win state then this is losing if any losing then this state is a winning that's the rule of transitions that we going to follow okay what is the time complexity for this particular code see this for a particular x okay we can go to multiple different states so we are, we, we would be able to we will have m is going to go from 0 till the range this is true which is log 2 of x okay so these many different values these many different transitions are possible so there are log x number of transitions that are feasible and in that case what we can do is we can uh, simply say that number of states over here is going to be x which is let's say in a problem n so number of states is x which is the chips okay given to you at the start uh, we can call this as n as well n chips are given at the start and number of transitions in general is going to be equal to order log n log of n okay so in total we will have order n log n as time complexity is that clear to everyone we have number of states as n because that means chips can be at most there we are only going to decrease it up and number of transitions is log of n because that many number of transitions 2 to the powers can be subtract from a particular number for n we can go till 2 to the power log of n okay log 2 of n so this is the time complexity of this particular code and now let's quickly code this up as well i mean this is fairly straight forward to code now provided that we have solved so many different different problems right now with the dp so given x we need to find out if it's winning or losing so integer like recurrence integer let's say some x pi we need to find out if it's winning or losing and uh, we're going to get an n sin n we need to find if it's winning or losing so see how i'm just going to return x okay you can print fancy print it with win and lose if you want uh so you have an x if x is equal to equal to 0 so if there is a no pi no chips whoever is going to play right now is going to lose right so if x is equal to equal to 0 return 0 okay if if you cannot make a move at x equal to 0 we cannot make a move so it's going to return 0 so this is the base case okay next uh, we don't have a pruning in this problem I'm not writing pruning any anything in this particular case pruning is not there what is going to be the 
uh, saved and returned state. So, sorry, the so, cache check. Then we have compute. Then you have uh, save and return. So uh, cache check we will add later. Compute. Uh, we can compute the thing with. Think about it. What do we need as a compute step for this one? Hmm. Integer answer equal to. So we are gonna assume. So let's say we are at a state where you cannot make a move. Okay. So we're gonna assume that the state is losing. For integer i equal to zero, which is m equal to zero, two to the power m, which is nothing but one shifted by m. This is nothing but two to the power m, right? Two to the power m is less than equal to x, the number of chips that is there, m plus plus. While this is true, we will keep increasing m, so we will loop through all powers of two. If recurrence of, if you take two to the power m number of moves, two to the power x number m number of chips. You're gonna get to this state, right? And if to any of the state that you can reach is losing, okay, then my current state is winning. So we are always gonna start with assuming that everything that you reach is winning and you are gonna lose because no matter what I play, I'm gonna lose. But if at any transition I can reach to a state which is winning, which is losing, then I will force my opponent there and it will be winning. And I can even break it off over here if I want to do it that way, okay? And then I can return the answer. Uh, this is all there is to the recursion part of it. Uh, just to add a memoization to it, we are gonna add a DPRA. A DPRA is going to be memoized, uh, uh, initialized to minus one because we're gonna have zero and one as the states. Okay, so we will do this if DP of X is not equal to minus one. Then you have already computed whether it's winning or losing. Zero means losing, one means winning. Return dp of x. Okay, so that, that is the whole scenario. So let's try to see what is happening in this case, right? Like this is the whole code that we need to have. Let's try to see for i equal to zero, i is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus, c out i, rec of i. Okay, let's try to run this code over here. Uh, we don't really need n anymore because anyway, I can print anything. So for zero, it's losing because we cannot make a move. For one, it's winning because I will can take one. For uh, two, it's winning, okay, uh, because we can take out two. But for three, no matter what you do, the other player is gonna take three minus that number. So you're gonna lose. For four, it's winning because you can take four directly and you're gonna win. For five, it is winning because what we can do is we can uh, take out two and my opponent is going to be in three because that's a losing state, so he's gonna lose, so I'm gonna win, right? For six, it's actually losing because no matter what you play, uh, you're gonna your opponent is gonna win. That is there, and that's that's almost the solution for this particular problem, right? That's the whole DP code, but. Let's try to like see, like in this case, you can see, can we improve on this particular thing? And it turns out that the, in most DP uh, plus game problems, sometimes you might see some patterns. If you repeat the thing that we did just now, we had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, something seems like a pattern. Let's let's continue this till 100 and see what happens. Okay, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, okay, that's that's repeating to all the point. Like anytime it's mod modulo three, it's it's getting zero. So maybe a very very simple solution for this particular problem would be, well, given an n, no need of dp, just go ahead and see out if n mod three, see out when, or else see out lose. So that's the most simplest code that you can potentially write. Though we came up with this logic by seeing the pattern that comes up in DP. This is often used in a lot of game based problems that you write the DP for the game and then you see whether it's winning or losing and you see some pattern and then encode that as a like if else logic. But I hope you kind of got the DP idea and how did we print it up and how did we see what is like kind of working in that case or not. 
uh, we have this win lose based on n mod 3 in this case this is a, actually an observation a result for this particular game you can try and prove it up uh, since we are not dealing with game theory in this uh, series and i don't want to make the day already too long so we're gonna kind of stop over here but this is a really interesting application of game dp so if i just go back what are the things that we have learned today almost all five different forms that we needed right uh, we have the first form where we decide from this to this much and we have the index at this index and some aggregate what is the y for index till n if the previous sum aggregate is x right then we had form two which is ending forms the first one is uh, i would name this would be object iteration like you're iterating over objects one by one to create subset and you can also think of it as knapsack form because knapsack gets solved by it right the second form that we learned was ending form ending or starting at index it has to include the index right so this is how you formulate this particular problems next is the multi array problem where problems where you kind of keep iterate uh, pointers in both the things or uh, levels in both the separate aggregate uh, se separate structures and you maintain some aggregate if required and then process the first match that happens in the in that Next is form four, where you deal with sub arrays stuff, where you have to break things into sub arrays and each pieces get solved individually. So that is where the sub arrays there. Maybe some aggregate might be there due to some computation that happens, and you can keep some more states over here depending upon constraints. So we'll see more and more examples going down the days. So that is going to be there, and we need to solve best y for a of l to a of r. That's what we solve. And the game DP finally that we learned just now that for any particular configuration, we need to find out whether it's a winning state or losing state, right? current position of the game is winning or losing and from a winning like if you can reach to any losing state then that means you can push with one move if you can lose reach a losing state you can push your opponent to a losing state losing state means you are going to lose no matter what you play so your opponent is going to lose so you're going to win if you can if all your moves reach to winning state which means no matter what you do your opponent is going to win so you're going to lose so that's what we kind of learned over here for the fifth form what's next so practicing questions i have added some practice questions for the day 3 i think you have learned already a lot of new forms and unless you apply them in problems you're not going to retain them for very very long so go ahead and practice the problems solve the problems in multiple different ways whatever you think of and all these ideas we're going to discuss them in the doubt class today and what you can kind of do is we can also kind of note them down one small request that i have for all of you is uh this small thing that uh like there is a lot of effort to put into this particular workshop if you have been watching these videos and do want to support this workshop one thing you can do this is a small request if in, like up to you if you want to do that uh, is like this is one particular note that you can keep in mind this is a very good note like i just created it for you guys so that you can remember it in the one graph so you can create a snapshot of this and you can keep it and if you want to share this with more people one thing that you can help me with is sharing this on linkedin or any particular site that or in your college which whichever place you might feel that people might know about might learn about more dp through this uh, workshop so you can share this particular thing and the registration link and let people know about this workshop that will help me get to reach to more people on this particular channel right so that's all that's all from my side i hope you learned a lot of new forms from tomorrow onwards we're going to do a lot of different extensive practice and new ideas some interesting things that i found and i'm going to love to teach you guys the, those things so that's all what we're going to be doing from tomorrow tomorrow onwards it's going to be all practice and learning new tricks and all these are the five basic forms you have unlocked it all now and you have the superpower now start solving questions and you're going to learn a lot more that's all from my side thanks for joining in bye bye see you in the next day